gauge dog me balancing Hey there, Lickin' Riffers, how are you doing? I hope your fingers are ready for another full finger style arrangement lesson right here on Lickin' Riff. And this time, we're gonna learn a whole new world from Disney's Aladdin. Now, this lesson was purchased as a private arrangement by a private student and donated to the channel for everyone's enjoyment, so thank you very much, private student. First, I'm gonna play it so you can see and hear how it goes, and then we're gonna break it down lick by lick with tabs right here on the screen. So, here goes, enjoy. <laughs> Okay, so if you're ready, let's jump right into the lesson. So, start with a D chord, just a normal D chord. And then you lift a finger off of the E string and play the open E string. And you get this. Okay, you wanna keep the chords ringing. Then you play a G chord, okay? But you only put on uh, two fingers on the third fret of both E strings, okay? Both G notes. So you have a finger free to play two on the E string, so it's this. Okay, again, the chord still ringing. Then three on the second string, and then another D chord, and you play strings three and four. Okay, and that's the first phrase, D, G, D. All right, and then, the next phrase starts the same way with D and G. Okay, but this time you play B minor after that. Okay, strings one, two, three, and five, just a normal B minor chord. And then three pull off to two on the E string. And then you play A. Okay, again, strings one, two, three, and five, but you can also arpeggiate it. You can play strings one and five, and then strings three, two, and one. Like this. Okay, just to vary. You can also arpeggiate the B minor chord. Okay, you can do anything you like with this. I'm just teaching you the basis. You make your own arrangement. Um, also, after um, you're finished with the first phrase, I told you to put the D chord on because you have space there and you can fill that space any way you like. Or just okay, just shorter page Um Okay, so the second phrase was um, D, G, B minor, A. Now we're playing E minor. You can put the chord on, but you can just play strings one, two, three, and six. Okay, and then four on the second string. I play it with my pinky because that way I'm more comfortable changing into F sharp. F sharp, bar on two, E shaped. And again, you play the whole chord, strings one, two, three, and six. Um, so that's why I play the four on the second string with my pinky. Okay, because then I'm positioned to make the transition without, without letting go of the note prematurely. So um, then after you play F sharp, you play five, two on the second string using your pinky because you want to keep the chord ringing. Okay, so you got it, E minor, F sharp. Now you play B minor at 11. Now before you get scared because of the fancy name, it's just B minor without the bar. Okay, so it's B minor with an open E string. <laughs> 
that's all it is and that's B minor at 11 so never be afraid of a fancy chord name because usually it's just one note moving around so B minor just lift the bar keep the finger on the fifth string uh, but you have an open E string so you play strings one two three and five okay what a beautiful chord a minor at 11 chord and then um, the second string just the second string on three it's inside the chord then you play an A chord again and you play strings uh, two three and five then you play three on the second string okay we're almost done with the verse uh, then you play G but only put on uh, a finger on three on the bass because you need a kind of a lower pitch darker G chord so you just play strings two three four and six okay without the cheerful uh, high G note. Uh, so just a dark lower G chord. Um, and then three on the second string, open E string, three on the second string again, while the G chord is ringing. Okay? And then for the final chord of the verse, D. And if you want to get fancy, play the D chord while you hammer on zero to two on the E string. Okay, just for a fancy embellishment sound. So, um, okay, or, okay, a block chord works just as well. So that's the verse, D, G, D again, D, G, B, A, then E minor, F sharp, B minor at 11, A, G, D. And that's the verse for a whole new world. Now for the chorus. You still have D on and you play strings one and three. Then on the same strings you play three and four. Okay, three on the first string, four on the third. Then you play seven and seven on the same strings. So you get the a whole new line harmonized, okay, by sixths, I hate that word, sixths. So, got it? Two and two, three and four, seven and seven, on first and third strings. Then this A chord, bar on two, up to the fourth string. Then the pinky on five on the E string, and you play strings one, two, three, and five. And you have space to fill, so I play it like this. I play strings one and five, and then I just arpeggiate the chord in any way I feel like it at the moment. Okay? Um, and then it's two on the E string, so lift the pinky. Then you play a G chord, normal G chord. Then seven on the E string. And then this A, okay, five, five, and six on strings one, two, and three, so bar strings one and two, put six on the third. And you play strings one, two, three, and five, or you can play strings one, three, and five, because then you need to play the second string, okay, five on the second string. So you can play the whole chord or just the sixth, or really doesn't make that much of a difference uh, I just want to you know want to make you aware of the options then it's G again then two on the E string then it's D and you pull off from two to zero on the first string and then play the second string on three so it's okay so got it so it's G two on the E string then D off on E, three on the second string. Um, and then you play this. Two and three on strings one and two inside the D chord. Then on strings one and two again, three and five, then five and seven. We harmonized with sixths before. Now we're harmonizing with thirds. Okay? So, and then it's this, okay, now 
this is kind of harmonizing a D, uh, a D, a G chord, um, because this, a D shape on seven, eight, and seven is a G chord. So I'm using the G string as a bass note here, uh, and eight on the second string for the harmony, and nine and seven on the E string as the melody. So that's outlining a uh, G chord. So put on um, eight and nine on strings two and one, okay? The first string on nine, second string on eight, like this. And when you isolate it, it doesn't sound that good. Okay, it sounds weird, but it's a melody, so... Okay, now it sounds right because it makes the transition into a G chord harmony. So, um, 9, 8, and 0 on strings 1, 2, and 3, and then 7 on the E string, and then 5 on the E string with the D string, and then 7 on the 3rd string. Now this is a harmony, a thin harmony of a D chord instead of this, okay? It's just choosing notes out of the chord, okay? And then 5 on the E string again, then this again, okay? 9, 8, and 0 on strings 1, 2, and 3, but then you play 10 on the E string, and then the same D chord. Got it? It's... Same move, uh, G, D, G, D, but the first time it's 9, 7, 5, and the second time it's 9, 10, 5. Okay, so 9, 7, 5, 5 again, 9, 10, 5, right? G, D, G, D. And then we have two different endings. So let's play the chorus again and then learn the endings. Remember this, and then this A. Then two, G, seven, and then this A. Remember? Then G to D. Then thirds, and then G, D, G, D, that we just did. Okay? For the first ending, you play three on the second string with your second finger because you prepare for a B minor chord. Then you play the B minor chord, open E string, then E7. I play it like this, three on the second string, one on the third string, open E bass, then the E string again, then A7 sus4, which is just three on the second string and two on the fourth string. Now I play strings two, three, and five, and then the E string. But I put on two on the fourth string in case it plays by mistake. That happens sometimes by the guitar's vibration. Sometimes strings ring out very, very, um, you know, uh, in a very, very low volume, but they still ring out. And if you play this, that's not the A7 sus4 chord, this is. So, just in case. Um, and that's the first ending. B minor, E7, A7 uh, sus4. Okay, the second ending starts the same way with B minor and E7. And then you play C with three on the E string, okay? And then two on the E string. Try to keep some of the C chord still ringing. Okay, the bass note at least. And then A7 sus4 the same way you did before, so the first ending is B minor, E7, A7, sus4, the second is B minor, E7, C, A7, sus4, the C gets pushed in there. So um, then for an ending or for a return to the beginning, you play D again and either start over or play my optional ending, which is this. <laughs> build a D chord on a G chord there at the end, um, just for an interesting sort of ending, but you can just end on D if you want. Okay, so you get this. D. Okay, with 
without the E string if you want to finish on a D note. Um, or what I just did uh, when I played it. Okay, now for this ending, you need to play G with this uh, shape, the pinky and the third finger on the E and E strings, because you want to keep the chord ringing, and then the second finger for two, the pinky for three, the first finger for one, uh, for, for, for one, for two on the third string, okay? So it looks like this, okay? So... This is, if you want to get technical about it, it's um, it's a nice, it's a nicely named chord. It's get ready for this um, G major seven add nine. Okay, this is a nice chord. G major seven add nine. So you can finish on that if you want. Okay, and that's. A whole new world so before you go practice this subscribe to my channel if you haven't already I've got a ton of lessons here for you to learn and I upload a new one every couple of days or so and a new full finger style arrangement every couple of weeks or so so what you've got to lose subscribe to the channel and enjoy join the lick and riff community go download the tab from the website the link is right below in the description you can't miss it it's a link Go to the website, download the tab, and if you want to give something back to Lick and Riff, everything here is for free. But if you want to help out, there's a large blue donation button right above the tab. You can't miss that. It's large, it's blue, it says donate. And everything goes right back into making the lessons, into working on the arrangements, working on the exercises, working on filming this, on editing it, on uploading it. It all takes time and work. So if you want to help out, and um, you know, everything goes right back to your guitar education. So I'd be more than grateful for any donation whatsoever and I thank you in advance for it. So thank you, thank you, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this half as much as I did. Now you go practice this, get it on your fingers, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.